Let's look at problem number one. In this um, problem, we have a mass of 10 kilograms, has an initial velocity of 5 meters a second. It's going up a ramp. The ramp has a rise of a run of 7.5 to 12.99. First thing you want to do on this one is find out what that angle is. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. We'll give us theta and you'll find out very quickly that theta is equal to 30 degrees. Alright, to do this, first thing you got to do, again, free by diagram, we'll draw an initial free by diagram and then we'll break it, break it into components. So what you would have initially would be a force coming down like, oops, let me get the vector here. You'd have a force coming down here of 98 newton, newtons coming down. You'll have your normal force pushing back up and you'll have some frictional force pushing down here and that's all you have so there's your free body diagram now what you want to do is you want to draw another free body diagram but you want to break it into components and we want to make it that it's parallel to this surface and perpendicular to the surface so really all I'm doing is I'm creating another free body diagram but we're going to do it along an axis like this. That's all we're going to do. All right. So first thing you do is draw this vector right here, and let's break it into components. So when I do that, I will draw the 98 coming down. All right. And then we're going to do. Let's see how I want to do this. Let's do it this way. We'll come straight down this way and we'll come straight down this way. If this angle here is 30 degrees, which we found, then this angle right here will be 30 degrees. Right there is your, is your perpendicular. So this one is the adjacent side of this 30. This is the opposite. So we know that this is 98 newtons. So this one would just be 98 times the cosine of 30 degrees. I believe when you do that, you're going to get 84.87. Okay, now this one here would be 98 times the sine of 30. And that would give me 49 newtons. Alright, so let's go ahead and draw our new free body diagram. And all we're doing is replacing the 98 with the components. We have a vector coming down this way, y1 coming down this way, y1 coming back up this way, and we'll have friction coming back down this way. Okay, right, go ahead and label this. This will be 49. This will be 84.87. This will be our normal force. And we can tell by looking at the picture, if we sum the forces in y, the normal force must equal to 84.87 because I have no other vertical forces or y prime forces going this direction. This will be our friction. And now we'll go ahead and calculate that. We know by definition friction is equal to normal force times mu. Our normal force is going to be 84.87. We're going to multiply that by 0.15. That'll give us our frictional force. And when we do that, we will find out our frictional force is equal to 12.73. So we'll put that in there. Okay. Now all you have to do is sum forces in the x prime direction and set equal to mass times acceleration. Now let me just go back one thing. One of the things I think confuses students is what direction does friction go? Does it go up or does it go down? Because in some problems your friction is going to go the opposite direction. But keep asking yourself what direction is the object trying to move? In this case the object is trying to move up. If it's trying to move up, friction will point back down or resist motion. If you're sitting on an inclined plane where the object is sliding down, friction is going to resist resist that motion so it's a turn around and go back the other way. So just be real careful there. 
All right, now let's go back to this problem. So all we have to do is I'm going to let anything go down negative minus 49 minus 12.73 is equal to my mass times acceleration. Mass is 10 times A. You'll run through and calculate A, and you'll get negative 6.17 meters per second squared. That is your acceleration um, on the answer key. They may have showed uh, 6.17, but it's, it's the same thing. It just means the negative means we're going we're going down. All right. Once you have that, so let's go back to what we're let's get rid of this thing. Once we have that, we can go ahead and start filling in this n. This is minus six point one seven. Now, if we want to know how far it travels, go back to your kinematic equations. We're looking for delta x, so we know that v f squared is equal to v i squared plus two times a times delta x. We know if we go up there and stop, our velocity final will be zero. We start with 5, we square that, plus 2, times negative 6.17, times delta x. And I think you're going to get delta x is equal to about, uh, actually I'll run it, I don't want to mess this up. Let's see what we got here. <clears throat> 25 divided by, in parentheses, 2 times, I think it's 2.03 roughly. We'll go, back, go back up here and we put in 2.03. Now to find the time, just go back again, kinematic equations. VF is equal to VI plus AT. VF was 0. This is 5 plus our acceleration. We know that was negative 6.17. We solve for T. And I think T, you get like 0.81 seconds. Again, you can check the math on that, but I'm pretty close, pretty sure that's true. 0.81. Okay, next problem or question says, does mass make a difference? Well, let's go back here and draw, grab this free body diagram right here. Actually, I don't want that one, the other one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, does mass make a difference? Well, let's just take mass out. Okay, if you take mass out, then this would just become mass times 9.8. This would become mass times 9.8 cosine 30. This would just be mass times 9.8 sine 30. Now we'll go back through, we'll just figure out what our friction was. We know our normal is going to be this, so friction would just be mass times 9.8 cosine 30 times 0.15. Do our same equations we did earlier, sum forces equal to mass times acceleration. So we got a negative mass, 9.8 sine 30 minus our friction, which will be here. So now look what happens. You got mass on each, both sides of the equation cancels out. Let me get a different color to do that. Masses cancel out here, here, and here, mass plays no effect. You run that calculation, and I promise you, you'll get negative 6.17 as the acceleration. All right, the last question says, if there's no friction, well, let's think about what happens if there's no friction. If there's no friction, this part just disappears. And what you'll find out if you do that is you're going to find out very quickly that your acceleration going down is going to is going to decrease. It's going to be about 4.9 meters per second squared and st instead of the negative uh, 6.17. And what's going to happen is your object's going to travel further up the hill. And I think if you run the delta x, you're going to get about 2.551 meters. 
So the object's just going to travel further up the hill. That's all that's going to happen. Because you're going to have a smaller, uh, or a sh when I say smaller, you're going to have a smaller uh, negative value. Or, I don't like to say that, absolute value. In terms of absolute value, your acceleration is going to be less. All right. Hope this video helped you understand how to do the first problem.